In this episode, I'm on the hunt for mountain lions and bobcats in the tall pines and rocky slopes of northwest Montana with my hound hunting mentor, Jake Grip. We've got this thing boxed in. It's early February, and the weather forecast is calling for snow and cold. A near-perfect recipe for cutting a track. The first night in camp, I'm making a Latvian dish called Atres Klops, which loosely translates to fast meat. It's a combination of ground venison, bacon, onions, and sour cream served over potatoes. A hearty meal that will stick to your ribs, just right for this cold weather. Jake and I met nearly 10 years ago, but it wasn't until 2020 when my girls picked out a blue tick coon hound from the pound that we became friends. Jake has been a part of Mingus's training every step of the way. You want to start up in this zone? I want to start in this zone. <laughs> yeah, so this is... That's a lot of zone. Yeah, this is a key spot in here for all the species we're looking for. And if we can get through it without having to do too much logging, somebody needs to go up too here. Too much logging? Clearing the road. I see. Yeah. Somebody needs to go up here. And then I think somebody else needs to go in through here and check this stuff. But I don't think we need to complete the whole loop yet. I don't really want to get into shuttling 40 mile shuttles yet if we don't have to. So if we can concentrate on here and here as our hot spots, and then go to this stuff and this stuff as a second resort. We'll be hunting, you know, if we don't find anything, we'll hunt till dark. Yeah. Like trying to find, and when it gets too late, we can't let the dogs go, right. but we can know where something is for tomorrow. Yeah. And then go work on it after that, or even run it, run that track a day old the next day, if we have to, I'd rather not. Hopefully it snows every night, but not so hard that it covers everything up. You're talking about splitting up, so that means you trust me to go and do a loop that, and I'm not, I'm not going to miss a mountain lion track? I don't think so. I mean, we've got new snow. Just go slow and look at all the tracks. We can start tomorrow together and lay a track down everywhere, too. And, we, you know, go do this, hopefully find something. It might be good for me to do that just to get, uh, get back in the flow of things since yeah, I mean, yeah, we just start early and I'll go do this. Six weeks. And then uh, we can split up after that and hit some of this stuff and all this stuff. I'd love to find a track tomorrow morning, but if all we're doing is starting scouting and that's all it comes to, that's great too. We can road the dogs and let them get some exercise. Can be an adventure, boys. Yeah. All right, mountain lion hunting with Jake starts early. So we got up at 3.30, trailhead at 4.30, and uh, we've got primo conditions. Almost two inches of snow, fresh snow on the ground. And the plan this morning is we're just gonna drive a road on snowmobiles that parallels the creek and hopefully catch lion tracks crossing. Now the dogs are actually staying in the trucks because we don't need them yet. We just need to cover ground and find a lion track or a bobcat track and then we'll come back, get the dogs, and then turn out. So there you go, plan is now, cruise around in the dark and look for a track. About five miles in with no tracks to speak of, Jake comes to the realization that the snow is just too deep. I didn't realize it's like super deep. But... Too deep the snow means no game. No game means, you guessed it, no lions. We head back to the trucks, load up, and head to plan B. Our second option of the morning is a series of loops and spurs covering 40 miles of snowy trails. This time, we're loading up the dogs since we'll be too far from the truck to come back and get them if we find a fresh track. Jake's dogs, Helen, Cinder, and Pip, are treeing walker hounds. Helen and Pip were bred to be silent while they're on the trail, unlike Mingus, who barks and moans and sings all the way to the tree. More on that later. Jake was right. Hunting in less snow meant more game. Okay. Yeah. Could be. It's a fox. It pissed on that bush right there. That's what we're looking for. 
Looks pretty thick too, huh? Yeah, that's a big track for sure. It's got a huge stride on it too. But not too long? Too long what? It's not like, it's not like, it's not a cat. No, oh, that's a lion, yeah. It, it's not fresh, but up here you can start to see the old toes in the track. It's not super old, it might just be a two day old or something. Well, that's a positive sign. That cat's been here in the last couple days, so we're in an area that's got a cat. Right. And a good size cat. One thing that's concerning is that side by side went up that road over there and didn't come back down. So they're up there now. And they're probably cat hunters. Oh yeah, I would assume so. But this cat's going that way. Yeah, it is. I don't know where it leaves the road, but we'll... there's the track right there. Jake, I think it's right here. Yeah, it's right here too, but I think it's going that way. It's a lot shorter stride down here. What I've learned from the other lion hunters I've hunted with is that stride-wise, usually like 39 inches is the breaking point of going female to male. This one in here is only 32, the one I just measured. It seemed like it was a lot longer up there, but there definitely could be two cats that just happened to cross in this same zone. Jake's following another set of tracks just 50 yards from here. There's a wolf over here. That was a wolf? Let's keep rolling. Hope maybe we can, we got this marked and see what kind of roads there are where he's going and uh, see if we can circle it in or cut it fresher. I think there's wolf tracks 50 yards over there. I think some of these wolves like follow the lions waiting for them to make kills so they can steal the kill from them. So. so let's keep cruising and see what we can turn up. That's a good sign though. Yeah. Coyote. Keep rolling. Is it worth looking on the map and like trying to figure out like the direction of that first lion? Yeah, if we don't find anything new, we will. That's all we gotta do. That's a big lion. The thing that sucks is it could just be from the night before last. We'd never know it with, right. the, with the way the conditions are. But yeah, this is very positive. So let's uh, let's go up to the T here and then start trying to loop it in back that way unless it crosses again. Unfortunately, we come to the end of the road without finding the lion track again. Our confidence was not great with this track to start, so we drop a pin on Onyx and keep looking. We'll come back to this area in the following days to look for a fresher track. For now, we'll finish our loop, then head down to even lower elevation to find even less snow, more game, and hopefully more tracks. What's so cool about this? And a big reason I'm so interested in hound hunting is that not only do you have to identify the bobcat and mountain lion tracks, but there's also rabbits, squirrels, pine martens, deer, and elk making tracks. You'd think that distinguishing them would be easy, but there are so many factors that make it a challenge. Is the animal running or walking? Is the snow deep or is there not enough snow? Too old? Too old to tell. It could be an old lion. I don't know. To be successful, you have to be able to ID them all. Some of the best woodsmen and hunters I know are either trappers or hound hunters. My goal is that after five years of studying tracks like a Jedi, I too will be able to quickly assess any track in any condition. All right, second morning of our mountain lion hunt. We had decent action. Yes, well, really no action yesterday, but decent track finding, which again, that's like, 90% of this whole mountain lion bobcat game is just finding the tracks. It's a little bit colder, it's negative six this morning. Jake and I split up, but we're gonna go back to the locations first thing where we found the old tracks yesterday. And hopefully those same cats are in the area, in the same areas, they've moved and they've laid down some fresh tracks. If it looks like I'm cold, I am. 
But keep in mind, at this point, I'm just a young Padawan. I struggle telling the difference between tracks in anything but the most prime conditions. I don't know what I have. It's pretty old. It wasn't in the fresh snow. It's like way frozen, but. Jake, on the other hand, can tell everything you need to know about a track in about a minute. What did you find this morning? Well, I came in from the main road over there, over the top, and I was almost out to over here. I cut a big, I think it's a bobcat track coming down off the road. Uh, if It's a big bobcat, so it could be a lynx, but I think it's a bobcat. So, that big? Yeah. How, show me how big that track is. Well, in the in the snowmobile track, it's like that. But then when it comes off and breaks through, you can see it's a little bit smaller, and I'm pretty confident it's a bobcat. Just, I mean, it's basically just right on this ridge coming right towards us, right? Yeah, exactly. We just got to go right underneath it. Yeah. Okay. I think with the snow being three feet deep up there, it's a very poor chance of catching it. But there's Why is that? The cat's going to be able to move away from the dogs faster than they can catch up to it in that deepest snow. So I think the best thing to do is put the two quiet dogs on it and hope that the element of surprise, them being right on top of the cat when it gets out of its bed, is enough to get it up a tree quickly. Okay. Otherwise. It's just going to run and do circles. and Yeah. They're not going to be able to keep up with it. It's really deep up there. Okay. But it's the only track we got today that we can run, so. Yeah. Go get after it, see what happens. Yeah. Okay, I'll follow you. Hello. Jake uses dogs that are quiet on the track so that a bobcat doesn't know they are coming. Bobcats have a lower lung to body ratio than a lion. They can outrun a hound, whereas a lion, because of its smaller lungs, cannot. We're just wasting time, so let's go up to the track. Hunt it from the top and uh, hope it's best. Yep. Where a lion is almost always forced to treat immediately, a bobcat especially if given a heads up by a singing hound, can stay ahead of the hounds and often escape. I'm not 100% sure it's from last night. I thought I was. We're gonna, we'll try it. We'll know pretty quick. Is there a point where the dog just won't run it because it's not fresh enough? You know, usually not, but it's cold. It's snowed in, and if it's old, you know, they might not, but I think they probably will. Sounds like they're ready for a run. We'll go get Pip and Helen and see what they do with it. If it's, okay. if it's not working at all, we'll pull them off. When Jake's silent dogs followed the track almost to the bobcat's butt, the element of surprise and immediate pressure forces the cat into a tree. At least that's Jake's theory. So, to not give this bobcat any advantage, Mingus and Cinder are sidelined. Come on, girls, push it through. They're kind of side hill that way. They're not moving fast at all. They're hung up right now. It says treed, but they're not. They're just at a loss. It's a hard track. It's all snowed in. And it could be different conditions down there. We don't know for sure if it's last night's track. It seemed it to me, but it's hard to say if it is. It's early last night before it snowed because it's all snowed in. On any cat hunt, once the dogs are cut loose on the track, it's their turn to work, and the hunters sit back and watch the action unfold on the GPS monitor. Before tracking collars, hound handlers had to follow their dogs by sound. It meant a lot more hiking and a lot more hounds left out overnight. I'm intrigued by following the dogs only by sound, but Jake, who's hunted long enough that he remembers the days without tracking collars, says it's overrated. Oh, they might have it. No. I doubt it, but Helen's barking and not moving. Well, that dog doesn't bark unless it has a cat. True. <laughs> I just am very doubtful. Let's see, what, maybe it walked a log in there, hung up for a minute. But either way, what I'm going to do is uh, drop this trailer here real quick, get this sled turned around and be ready to go that way, because I don't want to leave them tree too long making noise in wolf country, so we'll get down to them as quick as we can. Because any dog barking in wolf country is a signal to a wolf to come and check it out. And then kill it. But the wolf doesn't know that it's a... Just another dog in their, their territory. It could be a coyote barking and they do the same thing. Oh yeah, if they can get it on the coyote, they're gonna kill it. But coyotes don't make as much noise as hound dogs do. Yeah. How far are we? One thirty. Hey, one thing. 
There's a cat in this tree before we go back up. I'm taking some layers off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the biggest bobcat I've ever seen. You're kidding. No. It looks like a lion. It might be a lion. Holy crap, that's a giant. I haven't even seen it yet. Oh, my God. Get that kitty. Get that kitty. Oh, yeah. Good girl. Holy crap. And it's, it's not a lynx. No. And it's like a grade A hide. That thing is like phenomenal. Get that kitty, get that kitty. That's cool. Look at that jumbo. Good girl. Good job, girls. So I feel bad for Giannis. When the dogs tree in this country, I get really nervous because there's wolves around. And I kind of said F you to went straight to the tree. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's not worth losing dogs out here. Oh, that's awesome. That's one of the, probably one of my favorite catches ever. That's the first bobcat I've ever seen treed. That's one of the biggest and the best hide I've ever seen. And you see how wide his spots cover his whole chest? Yeah. This might be the best one I've ever treed. If it's truly a once in a lifetime cat, you're way more excited about it. Because to me, it just looks like a bobcat. Because that's, that's a, the first that's one a I've seen exceptional, in a tree. exceptional bobcat in the tree right there. So yeah, if you're like going to be stoked to have a full mount of it in your house, I think you should be the shooter. Well, I, I feel <laughs> awkward shooting. Oh, really? Yeah. But if, that, if that's like once in a lifetime bobcat, you should definitely shoot. It. I've killed two once in a lifetime bobcat. So. <laughs> The choice is made. I'm going to harvest my first bobcat. We tie up the dogs for their safety and I settle in for the shot. If I was to make a poor shot and the cat came out of the tree still alive, we wouldn't want to tussle between cat and hounds. Perfect. Yeah, you can let him go. Go ahead. Come on guys, get that kitty. Get that kitty, good girl, good girl, good girl, okay, okay. This is called wooling, and it's done as a reward to the hounds. That one, tip, come on. That's all they get, one little bite? Good job, girls. Incredible belly fur that's pretty wide, it goes all the way across his chest. Really unique spots on his legs right here. That's just a really, really good cat. Really good bobcat. Here, go ahead. Yeah, I'll carry him up there. That's a stud. Wow, thanks, Jake. You bet, that was awesome. Wow. Yeah, again, all these arm spots. Look at those little spots on his paw. That's, that's super not unique. Normal? No, that's that's very unique. What would it normally be? Just one a solid color? A lot of times color? it's just a solid color. Yeah, he's got really thick fur on his back, too. Just a really good cat. If you're going to kill one bobcat. That's oh, I'm planning on killing a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you ever only kill one, you got a good one. This is way, I mean, mountain lions are cool and they're amazing animals, but this is a lot harder to get than a mountain lion for sure. Give me your opinion on this fresh snow. Cause we like, we like fresh snow lot, for good yeah. tracking, but like. It's going to cover up most of the tracks from last night, but we might get lucky and find something super fresh. Yeah. You can still tell at least a few hours of what happened here. It's going to make it tough, but you know. But if you do area. cut something, I mean, it's like. Oh, if you cut something, you can tell what it is right now. It's smoking hot. It's like right there. So, yeah. Yeah. Just knowing that you've never been in here, like makes me excited. Even if we don't find anything, it'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. It's always good to see new country. Hopefully we don't get stuck too much today in the snowmobiles. <laughs> I don't think this is a lion. And if it's a bobcat, it's El Chapo. Right. I think there's a very good chance that this is a lynx track. Uh, it's a hard one because I think if you push down here, a lion or a bobcat is not gonna break through. It's not, no, no cat's yeah. gonna break through this. Yeah. So a lion would break through this. This cat's just going down to there. 
I've never been up here before, so I can't say whether or not I've seen Lynx tracks in here before. It was cold and brutal the next two days. We had narrowed in on where the game was, but the lions eluded us. We rode on, hoping the perseverance would lead to success. Then, on our way back to camp, after giving up for the day and the trip, we cut a track at noon. It's kind of quick, it's getting light, but we can definitely catch this cat if he's in here. That's the track we've been looking for all week. Come on. Here, here. Get the kitty, get the Here. Get the kitty, get the kitty. Here. Get that kitty, get that kitty. There's other hound hunters behind us. They're coming out after doing a chase about five miles up. So we're gonna get off this road to a wide spot, let them come through, and uh, we can just watch the dogs are doing from there. They're moving it. Cinder and Helen are smoking, and I bet Pip's with them. They're moving it fast now. Really snowed in. So they're still on it. It's just covered in deer tracks, and I think Pip might have the out track. I'm not sure. No. Damn, I thought we had that one in the back. <laughs> That's not what happens when you think you're. When you think it's gonna be easy. That's a lost cause. Yeah, there's a lot of factors working against us. I mean, that all that logging with the thousand deer. Thousand deer logging operation, closed roads. It wasn't meant to be. No. Damn, it, I, I want to say it's been a tough week, but it really it hasn't no. been that tough. It's been a great week. It's just hard to end on this. Yeah, <sighs> yeah no, it felt like bottom of the ninth home run, but... Yeah, cut kind a of track at noon. Well, you get out of here? Yeah, let's go check out that track, and then we'll go skin that bobcat. After looking at the track again, we realized we jumped the gun. If we would have just walked 15 more feet to get a better look, we would have realized this track was a day old with last night's snow in it. It's not impossible to catch a day old track, but it's a hell of a lot harder. Overall, this trip was a great one. We ran into three lion tracks in four days. Plus we harvested one gigantic That's bobcat. <laughs> I've hunted another season with Mingus and this experience has only strengthened my thoughts on how hard this hound hunting thing is. Mingus and I have a poor track record, but we're not giving up. I know there's hunters out there like Jake finding tracks and cats on a regular basis, and soon we will too. What a critter. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing me around. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm glad we got one. Yeah. It's a hell of a cat. So, yeah. you want to do it again next year? Yeah, I'll be here. <laughs>